Welcome back. Today on Dialed In DIY, we're having some fun making some introductory level robots. In fact, this one is made from 100% recycled materials. Yes, this particular Vibrobot is basically a bristle bot on steroids, but I had some fun goals to go with this. I wanted to see if I could build it for free, use nothing but recycled parts, see if I could get some directional control, and have a little extra fun being creative. I'll explain more about each of the items we're using to build this as we go along, but for a more detailed explanation as to what I used in this build, look at the description below. The main part of the body of our bot comes from a clothes hanger that came from a department store that has one of these little clips on it. This is what you're looking for and you want to cut it so that both sides look pretty symmetrical. Next, I'm taking the middle part out of an aluminum can and I'm going to fold it into thirds. So I'm ending up left with something that's about three quarters of an inch wide or about 1.7 centimeters. I'm going to use this for a couple of things, but the first part we're using it on is the eye assembly prep. I'm going to fold it in half and then sandwich it between these two zipper tops that came off of Arrowhead water bottles. These are going to form our eyes. These little blue caps are kind of cool because it actually allows the eyes to open and change the look of the lights once we get to that phase. I drilled some holes that are smaller than the screw I'm going to use so that I could put these two caps together with the aluminum piece in between. All of the hardware I'm using in this particular video came from previous What's Inside videos, so these were all salvaged. I decided to come down about an inch and a half from the top of the eye assembly and bend both sides up evenly against the edge of a ruler. Next, I made sure to have enough to overlap onto the body and cut off the extra so that it would fit nicely and cleanly on top. I'm then going back and drilling a couple of small holes in the body itself, and this is where we're going to be attaching the eye assembly in a little while. You'll notice I marked where the holes need to go in the aluminum once I set the eye assembly on top and then went back and just used something to punch a hole through it. And now I'm getting the screws set into it so that the eye assembly is ready to add to the body when we are ready to put them on. But first, we need to get the motor set up and we're gonna start by punching a hole straight through the clip end of the body. Then we're just gonna pinch the clip open and take a couple of small screws and push them from the inside to the outer part of the clip and then you want to put a little nut on the outside of that to hold everything in place. Now grab one of the extra pieces of aluminum and kind of shape it into a little bit of a tail. We're going to punch a hole through one of the ends only, then we're going to take the nut off the top side of the clip, put our tail in place, then put the nut back on. This is going to give us the spot where we're going to put the motor, but first I want to go back to the eye assembly. Take another one of these caps, draw a couple circles on a piece of plastic or a piece of cardboard, and cut out the circle just smaller than the inside of the cap itself. Put a couple holes in it and then put your two LEDs through each of the two plastic pieces. With the LED facing towards the front of the cap, you want to fit these inside and make sure that it's nice and snug. If not, cut yourself another circle and go at it again. I'm going to make a bunch of these little wire coils because this is going to be very helpful as we get everything set up to keep wires out of the way of moving parts, but also from dragging. It also allows us to bend them a little bit further to get them where we need them to go just in case we didn't cut it long enough. I'm going to connect a couple of these coils to a vibrating motor. These come out of a lot of different types of things, including pagers, phones, as well as an earpiece like this Jabra headset that I took apart in a previous video. If you don't have something you can salvage one from, you can actually find them online pretty inexpensive. To attach the motor to the tail, all I'm doing is taking a little bit of electrical tape and wrapping things down securely, making sure to keep the tape away from the vibrating part of the motor. Then go ahead and take each of the wires and put it underneath the nut that's coming out of the top of the clip on each side. So you'll have the positive on the top and the negative on the bottom. This way, when you put the battery inside the clip, it works like a switch. The little screw heads that are on the inside complete the connections and allow the power to flow. With that done, it's time to move on to making the eyes light up. So I'm taking the two positive leads of the LED and kind of wrapping them together or hooking them together, and then taking one of those coils and attaching it right in place there as well. I'm using a little bit of solder to connect everything together, but you could always use electrical tape. I have a few previous videos I've done on how you can work with LEDs. So if you have any questions about choosing the right LED or powering them, go ahead and check out those videos. I've got them linked in the description below. Now that I have the two LEDs wired up, I want to test them out. So I'm grabbing two 1.5 volt button cell batteries and ensuring that I have the positive connected to the positive side of the battery and they light up just fine. So I'm going to go ahead and put everything together inside the bottle cap and have it ready to put on the body itself. But first, we need a battery pack. Taking two of those small coils and adding them to two small washers, these are going to be our contact points in the battery pack to make sure that we keep a good connection no matter how much our Viberbot is vibrating. 
While those cool down, I'm gonna go ahead and put the eye assembly onto the body. It just takes a couple of small screws pushed right through the top of the eye assembly and into the body itself. Always make sure to drill the holes a bit smaller into the plastic so that the screws will stay in snug. Important user tip, make sure to use small screws so you can still open and close the clip. As an optional step, you can add some quick connects to your wires that you're gonna use in the battery pack and the LEDs so that you can disconnect them easily. Or you can simply just twist the wires together and then undo them when you're done. To make our battery pack, we're gonna take two of these little 1.5 volt button cell batteries and pinch them together from the ends. Wrap a little bit of electrical tape around the outsides, then put the washers in place that have the wires on them and tape those over the ends. Make sure to pull the electrical tape tight because it'll hold everything nice and securely in place. I do like to test everything at each step just to make sure that the wiring works before I secure things. So now I can go back and tape the battery pack right to the middle of the body of our bot. All right, hang in there with me because we are basically done. The last thing I need to do is put a couple of small holes underneath the front side of our bot and then add a couple of these long one and a half inch screws. These will serve as the front legs and feet that the VibraBot will move around on. So we wanna to check to make sure everything is balanced well and then hook it all up. The bottle caps I used in this build, I can leave the caps down to have a blue look or flip them up to make it look like the eyes are open. I can also go back and take some color tape and make a tongue. Kind of gives it a fun little humanized look. With the lights turned on, I'm gonna go ahead and take the three volt button cell battery and put it in the clip and set the bot down on a smooth surface and watch it spin in a circle. I intentionally kept the majority of the weight towards the very back or middle of the bot, allowing it to stay centered over the back pivot point. I was quite pleased with this result because it's kind of what I expected. By lifting the front feet with putting the weight towards the back, the front feet have the advantage of reduced friction. And just like most things in life, these will want to work in the path of least resistance. Another cool thing about this design is it allows us some room to experiment. Because the tail is held in one pivot point, we can twist it to the side a little bit and you'll find that it changes the angle of movement of our bot. We're now going in a straight line. As you can see from the list here, there are several things you can experiment with to tinker around a little bit with the angle of motion. Have some fun. If you've got some good ideas, love to hear about it in the comments below. I've had a lot of fun experimenting with this little bit of a hybrid of a Bristlebot and a Viberbot, and I hope you enjoyed it as well. Thank you for watching. Please press like and then subscribe. There will be more dialed in DIY to come.